Each of us has observed how some individuals go through life consistently doing the right thing. They seem happy, even enthusiastic about life. When difficult choices are to be made, they seem to invariably make the right ones, even though there are enticing alternatives available to them. We know that they're subject to temptation, but they seem oblivious to it. Likewise, we've observed how others are not so valiant in the decisions they make. In a powerfully spiritual environment, they resolve to do better, to change their course of life, to set aside debilitating habits. They're very sincere in their determination to change, yet they're soon back doing the same things they resolve to abandon. What is it? that makes the difference in the lives of these two groups. How can you consistently make the right choices? The scriptures give us insight. Consider enthusiastic, impetuous Peter. For three years, he'd served as an apostle by the Master, observing miracles. Transforming teachings were heard, private expectations of parables. James and John were with him when he saw the glorious transfiguration of Jesus Christ with the accompanying visitations of Moses and Elijah. Yet with all of this, the Savior con considered Peter still lacked a consistency. The blaster knew him very well as he does each of us. In the Bible we read, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, but I've prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Certainly, these were not idle words from the perspective of Peter. He sincerely meant what he said, but would act otherwise. Later, in the Mount of Olives, Jesus prophesied to his disciples, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Peter again responded, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Then the Master soberly prophesied, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. To which Peter responded more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. For me, one of the most poignant passages of Scripture describes what then occurred. It is a sobering reminder to each of us that knowing to do right, even ardently desiring to do right, is not enough. It is often very hard to actually do what we clearly know we should do. We read, but a certain man beheld Peter and said, This man was also with him. And he denied, saying, Woman, I know him not. Another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Another confidently affirmed, Of a truth, this fellow was also with him. And Peter said, Man, I know him, not what thou sayest. And immediately while yet he spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Peter remembered the word of the Lord and went out and wept bitterly. As painful as that confirmation of prophecy must have been for Peter, his life began to change forever. He became that unwavering, rock-solid servant essential to the plan of the Father after 
the crucifixion and resurrection of the Savior. This tender passage also illustrates how very much the Savior loved Peter. Although he was in the midst of an overpowering challenge to his own life, with all of the weight of what was to transpire upon his shoulders, yet he turned and looked at Peter. The love of a teacher transmitted to a beloved student, giving courage and enlightenment in time of need. Thereafter, Peter rose to the full stature of his calling. He taught with power and unshakable testimony, despite threats, imprisonment, and beatings. He was truly converted. Sometimes the word converted is used to describe when a sincere individual decides to be baptized. However, when properly used, conversion means far more than that. For the new convert as well as the long-term member, with characteristic doctrinal clarity and precision, President Marion G. Romney explained conversion. Quote, converted, converted means to turn from one belief or course of action to another. Conversion is a spiritual and moral change. Converted implies not merely mental acceptance of Jesus and his teachings, but also a motivating faith in him and his gospel. A faith which works a transformation, an actual change in one's understanding of life's meaning, and in his allegiance to God, in interest, in thought, and in conduct, in one who is really wholly converted, desire for things contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ has actually died. It is substituted, therefore, as the love of God with a fixed and controlling determination to keep his commandments, end quote. To be converted, you must remember to apply diligently in your life the key words, a love of God, with a fixed and controlling determination to keep his commandments. Your happiness now and forever is conditioned on your degree of conversion and the transformation that it brings to your life. How then can you be con truly converted? President Romney describes the steps you must follow. Membership in the church and conversion are not necessarily synonymous. Being converted and having a testimony are not necessarily the same thing. A testimony comes when the Holy Ghost gives the earnest seeker a witness of truth. A moving testimony vitalizes faith. That is, it induces repentance and obedience to the commandments. Conversion is the fruit or the reward for repentance and obedience." End quote. Stated simply, true conversion is the fruit of obedience. Through faith, repentance, and consistent obedience, faith comes by hearing the word of God and responding to it. You will receive from the Holy Ghost a confirming witness of things you accept on faith by willingly doing them you'll be led to repent of errors resulting from wrong things done or right things not done. As a consequence, your capacity to consistently obey will be strengthened. This cycle of faith, repentance, and consistent obedience will lead you to greater conversion with its attendant blessings. True conversion will strengthen your capacity to do what you know you should do, 
when you should do it, regardless of the circumstances. The parable of the sower taught by Jesus is generally considered to describe how the word of the Lord is received by different individuals as it is preached. Consider for a moment how the same parable may apply to you in different circumstances in your life. As you face challenges or come under strong influences, the word or teachings of the Savior can come to you in many ways as you observe others, through your own prayer or pondering the scriptures or through the guidance of the Holy Ghost. As I repeat the explanation that Jesus gave his disciples of the parable of the sower, mentally examine your life. See if there are periods when correct teachings find in you conditions unsuitable to receive them, and consequently, the promised fruits of happiness, peace, progress, or loss. The sower soweth the word, some sown by the wayside. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Could that happen to you in the wrong environment, with the wrong friendships? Some on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when persecution ariseth, immediately they are offended. Have you ever been in a circumstance when someone proposed something inappropriate and you did nothing to resist it? Some sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Have there been times when you wanted something so badly that you justified an exception to your standards? Some sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. I know this is the way you want to live your life. How completely and willingly you embrace the teachings of the Savior determines how much fruit as blessings you'll harvest in your life. This parable illustrates that the degree you willingly obey those things you know you should do, resisting rationalization to do otherwise, will determine how truly converted you are, therefore how fully the Lord can bless you. True conversion yields a fruit of enduring happiness that can be enjoyed even when the world is in turmoil and most are anything but happy. Of a group of individuals in difficulty, the Book of Mormon teaches, they did fast and pray oft and did wax stronger and stronger in their humility and firmer and firmer in the faith of Christ unto the filling their souls with joy and consolation, even to the purifying and the sanctification of their hearts, which sanctification cometh because of their yielding their hearts unto God. President Hinckley has declared, it is true conversion that makes the difference. To receive the blessings promised from true conversion, make the changes that you know are needed in your life now. The Savior said, Will ye not return unto me and repent of your sins and be converted that I may heal you? If you'll come unto me, ye shall have eternal life. I bear testimony that as you pray for guidance, the Holy Ghost will help identify the personal changes you need to make for full conversion. 
the Lord can then bless you more abundantly. Your faith in Him will be fortified. Your capacity to repent will increase, and your power to consistently obey reinforced. The Savior lives. He loves you. As you do your best, He will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.